Okay, now to continue color creation or color fixing so that it all comes together, we got to work on this rock. I'm going to try to go pretty quickly, but talk through what I'm doing. So I take that rock piece. I go to image adjustments. I go to levels. Um, this is in the middle ground, so I'm actually going to limit its highlights a little bit. Limit its shadows because they're too dark there. And I'm going to get to show you some, some lighting features beyond just levels, which is a direct adjustment to a, what's called a tool adjustment. And so now I'm going to show you how I can actually light this differently in different places on the layer using direct tools. And those direct tools are the dodge and burn tool. So the dodge and burn tool it looks like a little lollipop. It's right over the, the type tool. And dodge is the top one in the drawer, so I'll start with that. Because we've used levels, now this should be a little bit more understandable. I always want you to use dodge and burn on the midtones. It gets dangerous if you use it uh, other places, at least at first. And I want you to always use an exposure that's less than 30% because it's a very strong tool that moves very fast. So usually I'll do about 15%. And then I always want you to use it with a 0% a hardness brush with a fairly large size. So we're not trying to be too detailed with this tool because it's just overall lighting. Now, what does Dodge do? Dodge adds highlight. So as I paint it on my pixels, you can see that I can bring lighting just to certain areas. So if I look at the lighting of the scene, the lighting is kind of overall. And so it's not going to be so dark on these edges. It's going to be a little bit brighter. And so I'm just hitting it with that dodge tool. And it will only affect where I basically paint it with that lighting. And if I overdo it, I can go back in my history. Right. And I can even do a lower exposure if I want a little bit less. Now, just like with levels, if you do it too strong, or you do it in the highlights or in the shadows, you can lose pixel content. But one place I do want to dodge it in the shadows is right here, because that's really dark, and the midtones is not going to touch that. I did a little bit. So then I can switch to shadows and just try to brighten that shadow a little bit on that edge. Okay. Next, right underneath the dodge tool, is the burn tool, and this does the opposite. Instead of lightening, it darkens. So I'm gonna go to midtones, I'm gonna go to less than 30 for the exposure, around 15. I'm gonna use a very soft 0% hardness brush that's pretty large. And now, at the bottom of this, where it's in the, the mouth of the volcano, it's gonna be shaded in the mid-tone, so I can darken those tones. Right. Now this goes to, to dark pretty quickly. So I might have to adjust the overall levels again afterwards. Okay, But I can also go to the mountain, the volcano itself, this layer, and I can just burn the mid-tones there a little bit. So it feels just a little more dramatic, especially where there should be a shadow of this rock. And then this is a place where I can burn the highlight, because there's a really bright highlight on that volcano that I might not want. So this is how you can do really targeted lighting adjustments with dodge and burn. And then of course, don't forget your other tools. That can also help.
So I'm going to delete that edge. And then I'm just going to bring my rock down a little bit more. There we go. Nope. I'll just leave it like that for now. Okay, so that helps with the rock in terms of um, dodging and burning and little spotlighting on it. Now I'm going to make a duplicate of it and just do the overall adjustments. Because now the overall levels will be a little different because I've added dodging and burning into it. And now I'm going to limit the shadows just a bit. There we go. That looks about right. And I can limit the highlights a little bit. Now I can play with color. So image adjustments, color balance. I want to take away some of the yellow. So I'm going to take green and red down a little bit. Try in the midtones. And there should be a little less color diversity than in the foreground, right? Because this is in the middle ground. Okay. And now I can go to hue saturation, see if there's anything I want to do with that. I don't think I want to saturate it. If anything, I maybe want to desaturate it a little bit. Take some of that color away. And then I just push it to either side. Maybe about there. OK. So now the next thing that bugs me is this guy. So I'm just going to play with levels. And I'm not sure what I want. I have to kind of see what makes more sense. So this is where this is digital art having a great advantage over traditional collage. Is you can just play with the settings and see what helps. Now that definitely helps. By limiting the highlights, it makes it feel like it's sunk much more into the atmosphere. And now I can play with the color. I'm going to go right to hue saturation. And just take its saturation down a little bit as well. Maybe even darken it a little bit more so that it feels more believable. Okay, let's see. Now, if it's an eclipse, you wouldn't see a star there. So, what am I going to do? I am going to internally composite on the background layer, bring this patch of dark sky. Duplicate it, Command J, and bring that down over that, whoops, over that star. Okay. So this is a good place to save it. I've kind of met all the requirements of the assignment, and I've tried to make it look as believable as possible using what I've learned. Now for special effects. Make it even better. This is optional, but this is what's called a texture overlay. So a texture overlay will overlap the whole thing. And the, the texture overlay I use most commonly with, with landscapes is mist. So misty, I'm just doing a Google search, texture overlay. And you can look for clouds, you can look for fog, you know, go to images. And I want only large, but because it's 
a soft texture that overlaps everything. It's okay if it's not super, super big. I like ones that have a little bit of variety in them like this. And I don't want a watermark, right? You can definitely buy these overlays, but we want to, we're students. We want to find something for free. And then I want to view it full resolution. And even if all of you use this exact one, It's a nice resolution, 2,000 by 3,000 pixels. Even if all of you use that exact one, it would look very different in all of your pieces because we customize it. So I'm trying to save it to my folder here. There it is. Get it on the recording screen, good. Okay, now I go back to Photo P and I go above all my turned on layers and I'm gonna drag it in. So we haven't done this in a while, but I'm dragging in a new compositing layer. And it will go above everything. Then I stretch it out. I can warp it if I want, but I just wanna show you how it works. And I want a lot of this mist. So I'm gonna go ahead and stretch it pretty big. Okay, then the most simple way to use a texture overlay is to rasterize it so you can erase from it and then just take its opacity down, right? So that gives it a little bit of texture where there's kind of mist in the foreground, suffusing the valley. And then if I use my large eraser, that's very soft edge, just like if I were blending sky together. And I don't need to use a full opacity here. I might just use like a 30% opacity. On this big soft edged eraser in the foreground, I can erase away. So that it comes forward a little bit. And that mist kind of exists more in the background. So it, it kind of glazes over everything. And then in other areas, I can decide I don't want it as much. And I can knock it back. And then if I want it, I mentioned this earlier, if I want to give it a color, I can even do that. So I'll do that with a duplicate. And you see, if I duplicate the texture overlay, it will make it stronger, right? So I'll turn off the one underneath. And now I'll go to image adjustments and go right to hue saturation and click colorize. And now I'm gonna take the saturation way up and play with the hue. When you're getting the soft edge eraser, you just reduce the opacity of it, right? No, the soft edge eraser is under hardness. So it goes with size, size and hardness. Opacity is how many, is, is how see-through the pixels are. Hardness is how soft the edge is. So that's an important difference. And I can decide to make it lighter. You know, so if I wanna carry that kind of purplish hue of the sky, through the image, I can do that with the texture overlay. So that's just a really quick um, example of skills we'll be learning more and more, but it's a nice way to kind of bring everything in your landscape together. And then of course you can play with the individual opacities. And it should just make your, your finished landscape stronger and stronger. Okay. So that's me. That's, I'm all finished.